Hello and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. You can find me on Ravelry as Christy Dash Lael and on Instagram as Christy Lael without the dash. We also have a Relatively Crafty podcast group on Ravelry where we talk about everything. Um, everything that pertains to knitting and knitting supplies and even some things that don't have to do with knitting. Um, and we have giveaways and cows and other fun stuff. So um, I would encourage you to join in. Uh, we are having a knit along going on right now, a cowl. It is the Summer Soxtis cowl, which is running from June 21st to September 21st, the entirety of summer. And you just basically have to knit socks. They can be any kind of socks, any kind of pattern. They don't have to be matching socks. They can be two socks from two different pairs. Um, as long as they are two adult size socks, they count as an entry. You can also knit children's socks. They just have to be four children's socks to count as an entry. And I encourage you to post your entries each in their own post in the FO thread because uh, I want you to get full credit for all of the socks that you knit. There is no chatter in the FO thread, so also make sure that you post your FOs, uh, a picture of your FOs in the chatter thread so that everybody can ooh and ah, especially those of you who are doing very intricate color work um, and lace designs and cable designs. I've seen a couple of those in the FO threads and yeah, those are really impressive. So, um, so yeah, you definitely want to get all the kudos that you can. You earned it. Okay, so this is a knitting podcast, so I guess we'll go ahead and get into my knitting. Um, I have very few FOs to show you today. Not because I haven't been knitting, because I've actually been knitting a lot. I've got a lot of progress to show, just not a lot finished. Um, in fact, the only things that I finished this week were a bunch of mini socks. Um, I did have some questions about my mini socks uh, in the last couple of podcasts, and I wanted to let you know, I um, this I record on Tuesday, and I edit and upload on Tuesday as well. But because I have knit night on Tuesday nights, I don't do my show notes until Wednesday morning, my time, uh, Mountain Standard Time, and and so um, that you don't see them until Wednesday. But they are there, and there is a link to pretty much everything that I talk about um, in the podcast. There's a link to all of my FOs. It's it's to my project pages uh, and to my whips. If I talk about an old um, an old FO from you know a past project that I made a long time ago, I will um, also link to that um, that project page. If I refer if I refer to a um, future knitting and um, and I don't have a project page made yet, then I will link to the pattern on Ravelry. And then if I talk about any podcasts or Ravelry groups or um, Etsy shops or other shops, then I will link those below. And I try to keep it all very organized so um, so that it's easy to navigate. However, if you watch this on Tuesdays, then you're probably not seeing any of that. So I just wanted to kind of let you know that if you do have any questions, um, then just wait until Wednesday. And I try to get it all taken care of when I first wake up in the morning. So, um, so there's that. Um, but in regards to the questions that I've had, uh, somebody asked if uh, which pattern I used for my mini socks. And I think, I think the pattern is just called Mini Socks by Classic Elite. And you can just do a Ravelry search if the show notes aren't up yet. Um, I call them We Socks uh, in my show notes, so there's that. And then somebody else asked how many uh, stitches I cast on for my mini socks. And since this is a free pattern, I don't have any qualms about telling you that I cast on 24 stitches. And, uh, and then I knit for two and a half inches on the foot, do a quick little um, heel flap and gusset, and then knit two and a quarter inches on, did I say the foot? Two and a half inches on the leg, heel flop and gusset, and then knit two and a quarter inches on the foot and then start the toe. And um, and that's how I do it. Some of the socks come out a little bit bigger. I don't, at this point, I'm not really measuring as as closely as I was the first, you know, five to ten pair, five to ten mini socks that I've made. Now, now I just kind of eyeball it, but um, but yeah, they're about, it's about that 
I figure it doesn't matter if they're a slightly bigger or slightly smaller. Uh, so anyway, I knit some mini socks this week. Um, three of them are socks that I am going to be knitting soon, so they're preemptive mini socks. Uh, and then two of them are ones that I just discovered that I had missed uh, knitting. And so I, uh, they're postemptive. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't think it is. Anyway, so the preemptive, uh, there is this one. This is uh, the yarn that I'm going to be using for the second pair of socks for my friend. It's um, the Crafty Hippie, I believe. And, uh, and it's a self-striper, as you can see. Um, I also have this one, which is the sock blank from Erin at Bling Your String. It's the Kiss and Teal colorway, so um, that was super fun. I love the way sock blanks knit up. And then lastly, I have this one, which is the Desert Vista Dye Works in the Emeralds, Sapphires, and Prints colorway. And, um, and yeah, so such vibrant colors. And then for the last two, I, I had gone to Knit Night last week, as I always do on Tuesdays, and I had taken all of my mini socks in one bag um, while I was working on um, these, these three that I knitted. And I was showing them to, um, to my friends at Knit Night, and they, uh, they were, you know, making comments about how many socks I'd knit, and, and were surprised that I'd knit so many, and and, um, you know, asked, well, uh, this is every sock that you've knit this year, a representation? And I said, yeah. So I started comparing to my Ravelry project page, and I realized that I had missed a pair of socks. And it was the Monopoly and the Monopoly Money. Uh, if you re recall, that was the Desert Vista Dye Works. And they were the pair that I had knit like right at the last moment in June, I believe, and so um, I finished them almost, I had almost ran out of time, and, and yeah, so I was kind of stressing about getting them knit. Um, so I think I just forgot about making the mini socks for them, so I went ahead and made one of each. If you recall, the this was a pair that I knit one sock in the Monopoly colorway and one sock in the Monopoly money colorway. So I went ahead and knit a mini sock representation of each since the pair looked so different. I did the same thing on my Fire and Ice socks, if you recall um, those as well. So anyway, I got those done. So that's five mini socks finished this week, and that's all that I need to do for... Um, for the rest of the socks that I have planned for August. I'm a little bit concerned that I'm not going to get as many socks done in August either, which is kind of funny because you would think that the summer would be the time when you would knit socks the most, but I am starting to feel that pull to sweaters. Um, August is... Growing up, August was always the hottest month, and so it was like the, the dog days of summer in August, but we are starting to get autumn-esque weather here already. Um, it was like 65 and rainy all day yesterday. So um, so while it is getting warmer, it's still... I haven't had my air conditioner turned on for the past, gosh, almost a week. <laughs> so, um, and I've been starting to pull out my, my hand-knit socks in the evenings at least. Um, so that's that's something. I'm wearing a pair of hand knit socks right now, which is awesome. But um, but anyway, because it's cooling down, I'm really starting to feel the desire to knit more sweaters. So um, I may may end up focusing a lot more on sweaters this month than I had planned. I will, of course, get at least um, the two pairs of socks that I have on the needles right now done, and the um, the Lolo did it. Um, my Desert Vista Dye Works and my uh, socks for sock box of socks socks done this month as well. Those are the ones that have to be done, so I will uh, take care of those. So let's go ahead, since I've done the, um, the FOs, my, my minuscule amount of FOs, let's go ahead and do the whips. Uh, this sock that I am knitting for my friend is still a whip. It, it has grown a little bit since last week, but not very much, and Part of it is that this yarn is not very soft, 
the the sock is coming out you know not not rough but it's definitely kind of more feels more a little bit like opal than um than a merino um and then part of it i think is just I, i'm not a fan of this colorway and i don't know i don't like the way it's knitting up but but i, I will get them done i i I think I'm going to put this by my um, by my spot uh, on the couch because we we always watch a show together as a family, um, except for Monday nights. Now Monday is now um, game family game night, but uh, but the other nights of the week we we watch a show. Prob normally the Agents of Shield or maybe a Doctor Who, and so I'm going to put this in my spot, um, and that way. While we're watching the show, I will work on these socks, and I should be able to get them done a little bit more. Uh, maybe not faster, but just they should run a little bit more smoothly because I'll be focusing on the show. Uh, but it is hard to sometimes knit a pair of socks or knit any kind of project when you really just don't like the way it's knitting up. If, if it doesn't look cool to you, if it doesn't look pretty, it's not appealing, then then it does make it less enjoyable to knit. I'm sure that you all can commiserate with that. I cast on another sock, which doesn't help, um, because this one I'm liking a lot more. Uh, but I had sent Delaney upstairs to, to pick out one of the socks, one of the skeins that had been caked up, and um, I should not have been surprised when she walked downstairs with this one. This is, of course, the Desert Vista Dye Works in, um, what is it, Sapphire? I just said it. Emerald, Sapphires, and Prints. Um, and it's a self-striper. You can see purple, green, blue. And it's knitting up very beautifully. But I do, as I said, have to set the colors after I finish the socks because I'm getting it on my hands. Um, not as bad as I expected, but, uh, but it is, it is getting on my hands. I will knit these with a, um, with a true afterthought heel. So I'm just going to keep going on up until I, until they're long enough for the entire sock. But I am fairly close to the heel placement, maybe another inch or so. Um, so I'll put my, my, uh, stitch markers in when I get there. But I'm enjoying this knit. The colors are very pretty, as I said, and, and... And it's, it's fun to knit. Um, I do really like the Viso base for Desert Vista Dye Works. It's, it's, a good, it's a good base, in my opinion. So I will continue to work on those, and hopefully they'll be done um, by next week. And the reason why I don't have a lot of socks done, uh, I don't have a lot of progress on socks, when you consider that, what, just two weeks ago I knit two pairs of socks in one week, now I haven't even finished a pair in a week. Um, the reason, the, the, there's, a, there's a good reason for it, though. It's not like I've just been not knitting. I've been knitting a lot. I've just been knitting on my mom's sweater instead. Um, I, 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 one night just sounded like a good thing to start, so I cast on for the sleeves. Um, I'm knitting them... Um, uh, consecutively, so I knit one color and then move to the second sleeve and knit that color and then knit the next color and then move back. And so um, I actually shouldn't say I am knitting them because they're finished. I have knit them consecutively. So um, so they are completely done, as you can see, um, and they are ready to join to the body. And, um, and then on the yoke. This is the Gnarled Oak cardigan, which is designed by Alana Dacos. And it is a bottom-up raglan. So I knit the body. This is it folded in half. And then uh, to the point where the armholes are. Actually, I, I discovered I need to add a couple more rows. Just a couple more rows of the blue. And then, um, and then you knit the sleeves to that same point and then you join it all together and knit the yoke up to here. So, um, I've knit the sleeves shorter than the pattern uh, requires. I've knit the sleeves shorter than the pattern requires 
because my mom has shorter arms. So I, I measured, I confirmed the measurement. I measured when she was here, and then I just confirmed the measurement today to make sure I didn't want. Because you can't just add, you know, the, to the length of the sleeves, having them knit bottom up, that is one downfall. Um, I wanted to make sure that they were long enough now before I start joining them. So it just happened to be that they are the same length as, as the length of the body. So, um, so that made it really easy. I just had to, you know, match them up. So that worked out very well. And so, yeah, next I have to make the yoke, as I said, which will be enjoyable. Um, I think that's got a bit of a cable pattern. Um, to it so that's always fun to knit and while it will be a lot of stitches initially it will decrease as it goes up so that will be nice um, and I'll be using and I'll be using only purple for the yoke so I have lots of purple left and that should be perfect I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do for the button band I keep going back and forth between the purple and the red. As you can see on the sleeves and on the body, I did the ribbing in red. So I think that the button band in red would be a nice companion to the rest of the sweater. But then also because the you know a very large chunk of the top of the sweater is going to be purple, it would also make sense to have it in purple. I think I'm going to figure like figure it out after I finish the um, the yoke. There isn't any ribbing around the neck. Um, if there was, I would do that in red as well, and then that would really make sense to have the button band red, but it's just kind of got like a, um, a garter stitch, a short garter stitch edging, so um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, when I get there, we'll see how I kind of feel. Um, it kind of depends on how much purple I end up having left as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I am looking forward to seeing, to getting to the yoke now. The yoke is the part that's always the most fun in these kinds of sweaters. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it works up and, and doing it. And then I have so much yarn left over. I knew I was going to have a lot because there was really... It ended up having a lot of yardage, but but I've got, you know, like 70 to 100 grams left in each color. Um, so that's kind of a lot, considering. Uh, I will have less left over in the purple, of course, because I'll be using it for such a large chunk. But, um, but Mom had talked about maybe me doing a... Um, like a companion hat or a scarf or something like that, a shawl. And so I could probably do that for her. Um, she even talked about maybe using it to make something for the girls. I uh, definitely think that... I definitely think that I could work something like that out. There may be even enough to knit a sweater for one of the kids. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, but I'm really enjoying uh, where that is going and how much progress I've made on it. I'm, I'm excited to knit on it again, which has kind of lowered my sock mojo. Uh, but I'm, I'm also just kind of really excited about knitting sweaters in general, as I said. So I've been kind of coming up with, with new ideas and, and new sweaters that I want to start. And, and um, I've decided that... Like I, I, like, I want to, to knit a sweater for each of the girls. Um, I'm thinking about doing uh, the flax uh, from Tin Can Knits for each of the girls. Just kind of a nice fall uh, and, you know, under their coat sweater um, for this winter. And I have, um, I have leftovers from my back shore that would be enough to knit each girl uh, a sweater. So... Yeah, I'm kind of seriously thinking about that, but I've decided that before I do that, I need to finish the other sweater that I have on the needles. And you guys haven't seen this in a long time, so I thought I'd bring it out. I don't know if you remember my pavement sweater. 
which I was going to have as a nice summery thing to wear, and summer's almost over. So if you don't recall, this is the pavement sweater by Vera Velamaki, and um, and I was inspired to knit this because of Katie from Inside Number 23 and Amy from um, Stranded Dye Works, and I was like, oh, this will be perfect. I'm so excited about this. And so I grabbed some fingering weight yarn that I have. It's... Um, what is it? It is Linden Hill, it's Bristol Yarn Gallery Linden Hills, which is 85% Pima cotton and 15% silk. It's very nice feeling. Um, and I had, uh, was one of those things where I didn't have enough in each color to make a sweater, so I decided to use the yellow for the accents and the blue for the the main body and then I knit for knit on it for a while and then just lost interest started working on other things um, my back shore took precedence and then mom's sweater took precedence and so now it has been several months since I cast this on and it's just kind of been languishing so um, I've decided that I'm going to get back onto this when I finish mom's sweater and after I finish these socks then this will take its place uh, on the couch and it can be something that I'm working on while we're watching our shows because it's just, it's miles of stockinette. I have so many inches of stockinette to do. That right there is the, um, is the top of the arm hole. And so, you know, it's just, it's like 14 or something inches. And so, yeah, so I won't, probably won't get a lot of wear out of it um, because it's it's very light and airy and it's not going to be very warm being made out of cotton mostly um, but I will have it for when the weather warms up again so yeah we'll just go with that um, but I do need to get it get it finished uh, and then I can start looking at knitting my daughter's sweaters Plus, it would be nice to have the needles back. I am normally rather monogamous, um, or at least I have been in the past, and so um, it's it's a little bit strange to have something just sitting, not being knit on. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much all the knitting content. Um, I did get a uh, suggestion in last week's podcast um, for doing, like previous knitting and talking about techniques that I really liked or projects that I really enjoyed or that were awful <laughs> as well. And I think I'm going to start doing that. I didn't get anything prepared for today, um, but um, but I do definitely think that that's something that I'm going to be start do that I'm going to start doing in uh, my podcasts. Um, and yeah, because there's, there's lots of things that I've knit over the past 10 years, and some of it was an amazing experience, and some of it was not an amazing experience, and it would be good to revisit some of that. I will tell you that some of it will be uh, um, just photos, because I don't have a lot of it um, anymore. Uh, things that I've made it at, at, you know, commissions and that kind of thing, I don't have those those finished objects anymore, so I may just have to show you pictures but at least there's pictures. Um, and uh, yeah, so I will go ahead and get into my yarn haul. Um, I don't have a lot of yarn to haul today, but I do have some. Uh, the first one is this gorgeous skein by Biscotti and C. This is in their Felix base. I had a friend who, um, who, so bizarre, lightning struck her apartment building and it got into the I guess into the wires and started a fire in the building and she lost a lot of things um, and so that some of it got was able to be salvaged but she lost a lot of things so we kind of had a um, like a fundraiser for her and so I purchased this yarn and the proceeds of it went to um, to her to her which is which is great insurance was able to um, she, they, they had you know, renter's insurance, so they were able to, you know, recover money from that, but, you know, it's, you never get as much as you actually lost, uh, especially when you consider sentimental value. But, um, but anyway, so I got this skein, and as I said, it's Biscotti and C in their Felix base, and if you recall, I just recently knit a pair of socks in this base, and I loved it. Uh, the colorway is, 
Hoy vey. Um, Otto Rayante. Probably saying that wrong. Uh, but it, you can see it is a black... No, it's not even black. It's, it's like a dark navy. Kind of, kind of dark navy going into black. Small stripe with then white and then that beautiful teal uh, aqua color. And so, so yeah, I'm excited about these. This is a gorgeous colorway. And that's the only yarn I've got, but I've got some bags to show you. I have another donation for the cowl. Actually, I'm not sure if this is going to be a giveaway for the cowl or if it's just going to be its own giveaway, um, you know, something a little bit later down the road, but I am going to give... It is a giveaway. Carol contacted me from a single strand studio where she and her daughter make um, just adorable project bags and she offered one up as a giveaway. When I asked her if she wanted it for the cowl or if she wanted it just as a regular giveaway, she said, well, whatever you want is fine. So um, I'm going to kind of see how things go uh, with the cowl. Um, we already have five, uh, what is it, uh, prizes? Oh, I couldn't remember the word, uh, for the cowl already, so um, that may end up being too much. So we'll go ahead and um, and wait and see, but, uh, but as I said, this will be a giveaway nonetheless. And so she sent this really adorable um, Route 66 bag. And I, I know that you guys could see it better if I took it out of the packaging, but it's kind of packaged pretty, and it's got her label sticker on there, and so I don't want to ruin that. But it's um, it's just a really lovely bag, a good good size for you know shawls, even sweater project, um, uh, and oh, and it comes with a little dream catcher. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little dream catcher progress keeper right there. I didn't see that. So I I can't show you this one in great detail, but she was super awesome, and she sent one for me just cause, which was amazing. And so I can show you mine in, in greater detail. Um, so this one has just got all of this knitting, knitting quotes on it. You know, knitting is my superpower. Happiness is homemade. Uh, lean, mean knitting machine. It's adorable. I absolutely love it. And it's got uh, red and white polka dots on the inside. Um, it's got a nice handle for you know, knitting while you're walking, and then there's also a hook here so you could attach, um, you know, a lobster claw, big lobster claw or a carabiner and attach it to your bag or to your belt, as I do. Um, and then there's also one here, which is obviously for stitch markers, and I totally missed it, but mine has a little progress keeper as well, and it's a little half-knitted sweater, which I think is adorable. Uh, so yeah, I'm totally excited about this bag. I've been waiting to put it into use. It's definitely going to be put into use now. I think I'm actually going to take my pavement sweater out of the bag that it's in and put it in this bag now. Uh, I, I have OKD, Obsessive Knitting Disorder. <laughs> I'm in love with this fabric. I just want to read it all. Anyway, um, there... There you go. So thank you so much, Carol, for this, uh, for the donation and for the gift that was so wonderfully unnecessary, but really appreciated. And, um, and yeah, so there's another thing. So if we, if I end up not using it for the cow, then I will have a separate, um, giveaway that I will announce after the cow is over. Um, and, and that you can win one of Carol's bags. And I definitely suggest that you go down and check out her shop because I got a lot of cute bags. I will, of course, link it down below. And, um, yeah, guys, that's, that's it. So, um, I'm going to be a little bit shorter this week again. Um, I, I thought that talking about mom's sweater was going to take me longer, but it didn't. So, oh well. Okay, um, so there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and edit this and get it loaded. And like I said, I will put up the, um, the show notes tomorrow morning-ish. Um, it's normally what I do when I have my coffee, is I get my coffee cup, sit down, I watch the podcast... Um, to make sure that I don't miss anything. 
And then um, as I'm going through the podcast, I'm putting in the notes as I, as I, as I mention them on the podcast. And, and then it's, it's ready to go once I finish that. Now, sometimes um, I have to take care of like grown-up responsibility things before I can watch it. So it ends up being mid-morning. Uh, but I definitely try to get that taken care of before noon. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, I've been... So I kind of made the announcement last week... I kind of made the announcement last week that I was going to be kind of dwindling down my 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 booktube channel. Um, I made the announcement on my booktube channel as well. Since I'm not going to be talking about what I'm reading on my booktube channel on a weekly basis as I have been, I feel like if there's a book that I'm reading that's really blowing my mind, then I will talk about it here. Um, if you guys like that. I know a lot of of knitting podcasters talk about what they're knitting or yeah well of course they talk about what they're knitting they also talk about what they're reading and shows that they're watching and that kind of thing and I've never really done that mostly because I talk about all the books that I read on my booktube channel and I feel like I'm just repeating myself but I'm not going to be posting on my booktube channel weekly anymore um, I'm only going to be doing monthly wrap-ups so I read a lot of books still. Um, I can read up to five books a week, um, but I, and I read a lot of YA. So I'm not sure if you guys are going to want to hear about all of them, but I can talk about books that I uh, that like are really impacting me, ones that I really really like, um, or I guess even really really hate, uh, especially if they're if they're newer releases. So, um, so I. If you like that, if you think that's a good idea, go ahead and let me know down below and I can add that to my podcast. Um, and just preemptively, I'll tell you that I am right in the middle of The Shining right now by Stephen King. Um, as I had mentioned on our vacation wrap-up, we ended up going to Estes Park and in Estes Park is the Stanley Hotel. The Stanley Hotel is a place that Stephen King stayed at one night at the end, very end of the season and had some harrowing weird experiences and a terrible nightmare and that inspired him to write The Shining in 1977. And so um, because we went to the Stanley and did the tour and learned all about Stephen King's experiences, we decided that we wanted to read The Shining, and so Ron and I are reading it together, uh, which is an interesting experience. There's not been many times where we've read a book at the same time. There's been lots of times where I've read it and then he's read it, or vice versa, but we're actually reading it at the same time. Uh, he reads however many pages he wants to at night, and then the next day I read that same amount of pages. So we are halfway through, as I said, and um, I have read The Shining before. I read it 20 years ago. So I remembered the basics, but I did, there's lots of the story that I've forgotten. And, um, <clears throat> and so I'm, you know, being reintroduced to these aspects that I had forgotten and, uh, and just uh, reminded of what a good horror writer Stephen King is. At this point, there is no more build-up to the story. Now we're getting into the uh, the nitty-gritty. In fact, Ron announced last night that, like, page 355 is when it stops pussyfooting around with the horror and gets into the nitty-gritty of it. And so, um, so yeah, I haven't read yet that part today, um, so I, I am somewhat looking forward to it. Uh, but, but I am a bit of a chicken, and there's a reason why I read my parts during the daytime when the sun is up. <laughs> Anyway, after we finish re reading the book, um, we're going to watch the miniseries that Stephen King produced in the 90s. Uh, I have seen Stanley Kubrick's version of the movie. In fact, I watched that, the one with Jack Nicholson and um, Shelley Duvall. I watched that. Shelley Duvall? Yeah, Shelley Duvall. Uh, I watched that back right after I read the book the first time, and I was irate at how different it was from the book and how it had missed such good points in the book. Um, We've heard that the miniseries that Stephen King produced in the 90s is much, a much better accurate representation of the book, and so we're looking forward to that. We have it on DVD already, so I'm hoping that 
you know, maybe in a week or so we'll have that watched. Um, and, uh, and I think that because I've, I will have already read the book, I won't be too scared by the movie, um, the new movie It is coming out soon. I haven't read It. I tried. I tried. <laughs> When I was in high school, junior high and high school, I really wanted to read scary things. I liked supernatural and, and you know, uh, vampires and monsters and that kind of thing. And, and my mom did not approve, um, mostly because of our religious background, but also because she thought that I should be reading things that are, that are lighter. Um, but I really wanted to read things like scary, I, you know, um, the interview with the vampire and, and Christopher Pike. If you're familiar with Christopher Pike, he is a YA horror writer from the from the 80s and 90s. And man, I just consumed everything he'd ever written. Well, Mom didn't allow Stephen King, um, and I was still a minor, so um, so I had to obey her rules. However, um, Every year, she's a teacher, and every year she would take her sixth grade class, that's what she was teaching back then in a private school, to this um, dude ranch for a week. It was the, the, the sixth grade uh, trip. Um, and so she was gone for the whole week. And Dad would stay with us, of course, because he's Dad. So, but, but Dad doesn't pay as close attention. <laughs> My mom was the primary care caregiver. Uh, Dad dealt with discipline, and, and he was very active in our lives, but there were things that you could get away with with Dad. So anyway, I knew that Mom was going to be gone for the entire week um, to, to this dude ranch, and so I decided that I was going to go ahead and read it while she was gone. I could do this. I was 14 years old. I was brave and strong, and, and Dad wouldn't even clue in to the fact that I'd had this book. So she left, and on Monday I went to my school library and rented it, and got home and started reading it that night. And if you've read it, then you know the beginning of the book where the little boy, the little brother, I can't even think of his name anymore, but he... Um, He's following a, a paper boat down um, during the rain, and it goes through the drain and into the storm drain. And, and he's like, oh, my boat. And he goes to look inside, and there's a clown inside the storm drain who's like, come on. And, and I, there's popcorn down here and fun stuff. And, and then he ends up being taken by it. Yeah. That, I couldn't. <laughs> I read that part and I was like, nope, I, I'm not grown up enough to read this book. I ended up hiding it <laughs> in the bottom of my drawer because I had to sleep and that was not a safe book to leave out because it obviously was filled with evil. <laughs> so I put it in my drawer and the next day I went back to school and I took it back into the library and I was like, nope. Um, and I didn't pick up another Stephen King book until The Shining when I was 20, so, you know, six years that traumatized me, and I didn't read even more than 100 pages. So, um, so yeah, so the new movie's coming out, It, and, um, and I've seen the original movie with, um, Tim Curry. I watched it with Ron, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago. Uh, he had read It again for the second time and decided he wanted to watch the movie. And I was like, okay, yeah, I mean, I can watch this 80s horror movie. This will be all right. Um, and it was all right, but I've seen previews for the new It, and oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't know if I can. <laughs> Ron really wants to watch it, too, and I'm like, you may have to watch that one alone. <laughs> I don't often make him do that because because I like movies. I like watching movies a lot, but there's been a couple of times when he's had to go by himself. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a video game for PlayStation called Silent Hill, um, and we played that game together. Well, he played, and I watched, um, and it would help him with puzzles and stuff like that. Um, but that game scared me, and so when they made a Silent Hill movie, I told him, no, you have to watch that one alone. I barely made it through the game. I can't even imagine what the movie's like. So anyway, um, 
So it, <laughs> sorry, I went off on a way long tangent. Um, this is one of the reasons why there isn't very much Stephen King in my um, already read list because I just, he's scary. He writes scary things. So I've read The Shining. Um, I read 75 pages of it. And I read The the Talisman and The Dark, The Bleak House, The Dark House. I read those two books. Um, and that's it. And I know that he's read a lot, or, uh, that he's written a lot of non-horror books as well. Um, you know, The Green Mile, The Shawshank Redemption. Um, there's lots of other ones, but... <sighs> Oh, no, I thought I, I take that back because I also read 112263 um, last last December, January ish. And um, yeah, that was really good. Uh, that was not horror. Um, that was a very good book. I really recommend it, especially if you're a fan of, of that era of history, um, you know, around Kennedy's assassination. So, um, so anyway, I'm totally getting off subject. The Shining. I, I, I'm reading The Shining. <laughs> I'm liking it. Um, and I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and stop here. I, uh, yeah. If you like me to talk about books more, then let me know. I can, I can do that. Just tell me down below and I can, I can add that to the end of the podcast. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go now that I've waxed poetic about Stephen King as a writer. And, uh, and I will talk to you guys later. Happy knitting. Bye-bye. <laughs>